Hi, it's Janie. Welcome back to my channel. And today I'm going to be talking about a product that I received at Christmas. And this is the 23andMe Ancestry Kit. Um, this is a DNA sample kit that will test your DNA and then come back and let you know what your ancestry is. Um, this one is strictly just the ancestry. It is not the ancestry and health. So all I'm going to be finding out is what my um, DNA makeup says that I am as far as ancestry. So the first thing that I had to do um, with my kit was I had to go onto the website and register my kit. And I'm going to open this up and show you what it looks like on the inside. This one's actually my husband's. Mine is at work. As so I am going to be um, doing it today. I registered register. register I registered it, I can't say that word, anyway, yesterday, um, but I didn't send it off because yesterday was Martin Luther King Day and so there was no mail. So I didn't want to um, collect my specimen and then have it set. But anyway, it does come with a prepackaged um, box. So this is the box that I'm going to be sending my sample back. And um, when I registered my um, sample or my box, I had to um, put in my name, my birthday, and an email address to register it. Plus, inside the box is your little vial here that you're going to be collecting your specimen in. And on the vial, it has a barcode that is unique to this kit. And so I had to put in that barcode to um, register my um, box. So um, it asked. There was a few things that I could I could opt in or out of. Um, first of all, I had to read their um, disclosure on their privacy and what you know you can expect from the 23andMe, and I had to you know agree to that before I could go on. Um, I was able to agree to either having my DNA kept on file or I could opt out of that. So meaning once they tested the, the DNA, blah, my saliva, then it would be destroyed or they could keep it. Um, I opted for them to not keep it. Um, my husband is one of those conspiracy theory type people. So um, I don't want, I don't want this um, kept, but that doesn't mean that once I send my DNA to this facility and they test it, I mean, I'm sure it's gonna be on file somewhere. Let's be real. But anyway, um, I was able to opt in or, or out of having it kept. I was also able to opt in or out of having my DNA um, kept for research purposes. And um, if I was to opt in for that, then I would be um, required, you know, to maybe do surveys or questionnaires or, you know, my DNA could be sent off to a research facility, this, that, and the other. So, um, so that was something else that I decided to opt out of. Um, I just, I just want to know what my ancestry is. I don't want to have to deal with getting all these emails and surveys and all that other stuff. But anyway, so um, now that my box is registered, um, I will have to collect my um, my saliva specimen in this little vial here. Um, you cannot eat, drink, brush your teeth, um, chew gum, have any kind of mint anything basically you're doing a full-on fast for 30 minutes prior to collecting your specimen um, once you start collecting your specimen you have 30 minutes to complete it because um, i thought you would just you know like spin in this you know go <laughs> and then that would be it but no um, you actually have to do quite a bit i mean this is going to have quite a bit of saliva in here and then there is a um a liquid here that you put in there that's supposed to preserve it and then there's a biohazard bag that you put it into that and then you um, put it into um, this box and ship it off and then you're supposed to have um, 
your results in three to four weeks, four to six weeks, something like that. I'm recording this first half of this part on January the 16th, the day after Martin Luther King Day. And um, so I should be having results by the middle of February, hopefully, hopefully. So I wanted to do just this very first half of the little box here to kind of tell you what the registration process was, what the box looks like, what's actually in the kit in case you were curious and was thinking about maybe doing um, your own DNA testing. Now, I don't know if this is, I know there's so many of them out there now that you can do for um, testing. And I, I even seen one the other day where you could send in uh, your DNA sample to get a um, eating a diet, basically. I was trying to think of something better to say other than a diet, but a diet plan based off of your, your DNA on what's going to um, help you to lose weight. And um, then it had this little card in here. I talked a little bit about um, the process, and there's a website and a number if you have questions. And then also on the back, it tells you to register your um, box and also it tells you to write down your um, barcode off of your vial on here and to keep this for um, reference so that if you have any questions on your um, your um, kit you can call and ask them because once they receive this kit and it, the vial goes to the um, the lab to be tested once it gets to the lab, the only thing that they have to go by for reference is that barcode. They don't, your name is not linked to that vial at that point. Uh, so those people don't know whose vial is who. So they say, <laughs> anyway. So anyway, so that is it for now. So as soon as I get my results back, I'll be back on here and I will share, share with you the process on what happened between the time that I send this and the time that I get it back and then what my results are. So thank you so much and I'll talk to you soon. Okay, I'm back. Um, I finally got my results for my DNA test. Um, let me tell you a little bit about how long it did take before we get into the reveal on what my nationality is, uh, my ancestry. Anyway, um, it did take it tells you that it takes anywhere from six to eight weeks. Um, it did take the full eight weeks, and that eight weeks started when they received my um, DNA test or my my um, saliva sample in their lab, and that they had logged it in. So from start to finish, from the time you know, from when I did my sample, put it into the mail, they got it, and then they logged it, and then they got my results back was more like eight to 10 weeks. It did take quite a bit of time. Um, so when you send it in, don't be expecting it to be back within a few days because it's, it's not gonna happen. It's, it's gonna take a little while. So anyway, um, I am a little bit disappointed in my results. There is one category or area or um, nationality that I was hoping my percentage would be um, higher than what it showed, but it is what it is. Um, there's still a part of me that wonders if maybe they just used a computer generated program and popped out this report and sent it to me. You know, I don't know. I'm not there to actually see them testing my saliva so you know that is a possibility but I will tell you from some of my categories that they showed that I was um, my DNA showed that I was corresponds with the information that I already knew about myself so I did have a little bit of an inkling of what 
my um, nationality is and what it's made up of. I just didn't know what percentage. And then there are some categories there that I was a little bit surprised about. I, I didn't realize that I was this type of nationality. Anyway, so we're gonna get started. I'm gonna show you or tell you what I am. Um, I Like I said, I already looked, obviously you know that. Um, I couldn't wait. I couldn't wait to just sit down here and um, look at it and tell you on camera. So anyway, so first of all, one of the things that they did um, tell me is that my maternal Hapla, Hapla group is a T2B, which 57% um, of the 23andMe participants come back as this. And basically, that's just saying that um, going back um, 200,000 years ago, we have been a descendant of this one woman that lived in Africa and um, let me see if I can find it yes and that's only there and the reason why they're able to trace it to this one woman even though there was probably obviously there was multiple women at that time this is the only woman that they've been able to recover DNA from so pretty much everyone has being traced back to that one woman. It doesn't say who or what, but um, anyway. So that is part of it. Um, it says the T2B is relatively common among 23andMe customers. Um, so that wasn't really anything that exciting to know. And it did not show up anything um, paternal on mine I don't know I don't know if that's just because I'm female and um, when my husband gets his back his may be not showing anything maternal I don't know because it doesn't show anything paternal and I don't have anything as far as my DNA family because I didn't sign up to be linked with other people and I don't know if anybody in my family has done this 23andMe um, so I I just wanted to kind of keep just what I have for for me to look at only. Anyway, okay, so let's get into my ancestry compilation. Composition is what it is. Ancestry composition. I'm looking at my phone. And da -da 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 -da, drum roll. And this is kind of what surprised me because I didn't. I don't know. Um. Well, let me talk about the one that I was a little disappointed in, and that was the fact that um, my Native American percentage only came back as 0.3%. Mm. I was hoping that it was more than that. Um, I am a recognized tribal member for my tribe, which is Potawatomi, and I do have a tribal row card. Um, we can go back and trace uh, my ancestry back to my my great great grandfather was um, the one that we were able to get on the row with was with him so I was hoping that that percentage would be higher I was hoping for at least like a 10% at least but it didn't even show up as a full percent just 0.3 so that was a little disappointing for for me so and I have some my okay so 0.3% was for um, the Native American. And then I had 0.1% um, was unassigned, so they don't know what that 0.1% of me is, which is probably pretty common. And then I had um, a negative 0.1% of Sub-Saharan African and I'm going to assume that's probably from being traced back to that one woman 200,000 years ago. That's where that negative percent came from. Okay, so now to the nuts and bolts of what the rest of me is made up of. <laughs> that's just a little bitty bit of me right there. Um, it's saying that I am 99 
0.5% European. And um, the subcategories of the European, because that's pretty broad, right? You know, there's lots of <laughs> nationalities that are European. Um, let me see if I can do the smallest one, which is um, Southern European, which was 2%. And it just um, says it was broadly European 2%. It doesn't do any subcategories in there. 6.4% um, of me is Scandinavian. Then 17.7% um, is broadly Northwestern European. Okay. And then 22.6% of me is French and German. And I knew that I was French. Um, I didn't know exactly how much French I was. Um, my maiden name is Taysier, which is T-A-S-C-I-E-R, which is French, and it's pronounced Tassier. So I knew that uh, from my maiden name that I was had some French in me. This next category, I didn't, I wasn't expecting. Um, for some reason, I don't know why, but anyway, it's saying, and this is the majority of what I am made of, is 48.4% of me says that I am made up of British and Irish. So, there you have it. I thought I would see maybe some, um, um, some Scottish in here, maybe. I don't know, but anyway, so yeah, so I'm mostly, I'm mostly British and Irish. So I, did, I would not have thought that I was British or Irish, either one. Um, like I said, I knew it was Indian, I knew it was French. I kind of had a, an, I kind of almost thought maybe I would show up more um, African than what I did because of my um, curly hair. Because I've always been told that, um, that my mother's side of the family was descendant of black dutch and that's where we got the black hair from so i don't i don't know i don't really understand all of it you know like i said there's still part of me that just wonders if they just you know threw my saliva away when it came in and just put me in a, a computer generated program and this is what it popped out so it's going to be interesting to see what my husband's come back as because he's pretty sure that he's german and um Norwegian and um, oh, I can't think of the other one. Oh, what is that? Not Scottish, Norwegian. German, Norwegian, Swedish. Do so you think he's Swedish? Anyway, I don't remember, but um, he's pretty sure that he's has a lot of German in him, which could be never know. So anyway, so that is it for my 23andMe results. It was very interesting to find out. Um, be worth to possibly do some digging if I had time to do that. I don't have time to do that right now with everything else that's going on in, in my life. But anyway, so there you have it. Now you know and I know what uh, my DNA says about me and what I am. So 99.5% European. So there you go. So thank you so much for joining me. I hope that you enjoyed um, learning about the 23andMe Ancestry um, DNA kit and the process that I went through to get my results. And we'll talk to you soon.